A VPN for Firefox users, SIM jacking can steal device data, and DNS over HTTPS will go live in October. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for September 17th, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash ThreatWire. And now, on to the news. Mozilla just made some very big updates to Firefox and their subsets that have added some security features for all users. First, Firefox will now protect your privacy better than before by blocking third-party trackers by default instead of being opt-in. This was available as early as October of 2018, but it had to be manually changed by the user, so only 20% were actually using the feature. In June, they made the news official by making the feature the default for new users. Now, Firefox version 69, which released earlier this month, includes the enhanced tracking protection for all users. Now, this only works for a list of bad actors that are a part of the disconnect list, as opposed to Safari, which automatically blocks all third-party trackers. Now, this may be due to legitimate sites using cookies for content that makes their site usable, which would also be blocked as well. Firefox 69 also blocks crypto miners from accessing a local computer CPU, which also should help with battery drain or sluggishness. On top of this, Mozilla also released their new Firefox Private Network, a VPN service that aims to help keep online activity private and keep websites and advertisers from knowing information about users based on their browsing habits. It will be able to mask your IP address and protect sensitive information whenever you use public Wi-Fi, for example. This is just like the other VPNs on the market, and Mozilla's Firefox Private Network will also encrypt data through proxy servers that are provided by cloud. Cloudflare. Now, according to Mozilla, Cloudflare will have access to your IP address and source destination information, which should be deleted within 24 hours. The VPN is in a free beta now and only for desktop users in the United States. Mozilla is calling this their Firefox test pilot program to give users the chance to test out new features before the final release. Now, it's likely to not be free forever, but pricing has not been determined at this time. The VPN can be downloaded and a new toggle to turn it on or off would be added to the toolbar of the Firefox browser. The Firefox private network only works in the Firefox browser, so if you are needing additional security and privacy outside of a browser, you would probably want to use a separate VPN for that. Shout out to Dead Robot on Patreon for sharing this story with me. Researchers at Adaptive Mobile Security published research last week about a new attack that they dubbed SimJacker, which can allow an attacker to compromise a target mobile phone just by sending an SMS. This sounded pretty dubious, so I wanted to dig a little deeper into the story. The vulnerability is part of a flaw found within software which is called the SAT Browser, or SIM Alliance Toolbox Browser, which is a dynamic SIM toolkit. The software is embedded on SIM cards being used in 30 different countries, and it can be exploited remotely on any smartphone. The SIM toolkit, which is STK for short, comes on physical SIM cards as well as eSIMs, and it allows for over-the-air changes to subscriptions and services. The SDK can allow for commands to be sent via SMS to the device, like setting up a call, launching the browser, and providing local data. It impacts SIMs that have the SAT browser because they don't check the origin of the messages, but also allow data downloads via SMS. The STK instructions craft messages that are sent to the device and the STK library is used as an execution environment, so commands are triggered. Now, because of this, a malicious actor could also use the SMS environment to send commands meant to infect or surveil the device as well. An attacker would simply need a $10 GSM modem to do things such as steal the IMEI information, spread fake messaging, dial premium rate numbers, spy on the victim's surroundings, spread malware, disable the SIM, and retrieve device information. Now, to be clear, just because an attacker uses the SMS environment does not actually mean that you would see a text message. 
It could be completely hidden from the victim the entire time. The paper outlines basic information on the attack and how it is performed, but it leaves out technical details which will be announced later in October. With that said, researchers do believe that they have already seen real-world examples of SimJacker being used against Apple, ZTE, Samsung, Google, Huawei, Motorola, and also IoT devices with Sims. The researchers even found that a private company has been using SimJacker for at least two years to conduct targeted surveillance on victims in many countries with government assistance. They believe that the attack was also developed by the private company. Now, the STK technology has not been updated since 2009, so it's a decade old. It puts a billion people at risk of infection without even knowing it's occurring. All information was disclosed to the GSM Association and the SIM Alliance representing the SIM card and UICC manufacturers, and the SIM Alliance has already provided recommendations to manufacturers. Mobile operators can mitigate the problem by analyzing and blocking suspicious messages that contain the SAT browser commands. And as for users, you would need to request replacement SIMs that have updated security in place, but that may not even be available at this time. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Personalized thank you videos continue to go out this week for anyone who pledged during that special offer that I did. If you can't tell, I had lots of videos to do. I want to start a security and privacy audio podcast as well to be a part of the ThreatWire feed. That is my next Patreon goal, so if you want to help, check out my community down below. As usual, you don't have to, but any help is appreciated. The link is in the description. And also a big thank you to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, so keep them coming. Google just announced new privacy-centric updates for users following closely behind Mozilla, who announced similar last weekend. Google is planning to implement an experimental version of DNS over HTTPS in their upcoming Chrome 78 release set for October. DNS over HTTPS does DNS lookups, which is when you find the server IP address of a domain name, over encrypted HTTPS connections to that DNS server rather than in plain text. It's something that has been in development since 2017, with privacy being the main factor. Now, DNS over HTTPS could help users mask their browsing usage by keeping attackers, including ISPs, from seeing domain name lookups or seeing what sites that you are visiting. This could also make it harder to see network traffic from an IT or networking stance. Now, DNS over HTTPS also makes content filters that are DNS-based break. Now, while Firefox's implementation sets the default DOH server to Cloudflare, Google sets DOH to whatever provider the user is using. So if the DNS provider is not compatible, Chrome operates as normal. The providers that Google is using include Cloudflare as well, Clean Browsing, DNS.SB, Google, OpenDNS, and Quad9. So for example, if a user is already using OpenDNS to resolve domain names, the new DNS over HTTPS setting will automatically use OpenDNS's DOH compatible resolver instead of a regular one. It's not available on Linux and iOS yet, but it will work for desktops and mobile. Earlier this year, Google also announced their work with DNS over TLS, which is a completely different standard and not to be confused with DNS over HTTPS, though the concept is basically the same. Now, before I leave, I want to say thank you so much to Mark, Teofilo, Tim, JD, Mike, Tom, and Robert, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you so much. Y'all are awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.